Hello, I'm Fleur Hitchcock and I'm coming to you from my lockdown in Wiltshire, which is probably where your lockdown is. And um, mine's pretty good because I live in the middle of nowhere very much and I can go for lots of walks and I'm an author. And the thing about us is that we like nothing better than a bit of time to think and time on our own. In fact, we quite like being bored. But I can completely understand if you don't like being bored. Um, so I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my books. Um, they're all around me. And uh, so there are the Cliff Topper books, which are really nice if you're maybe 7 to 12. The characters in them are aged 8 to 12. And they are four cousins who go on adventures together um, and have a lot of fun. Then there are the murder books, Murder at Twilight and Murder in Midwinter, which are a little bit older and a little bit darker, perhaps. Uh, Bus Stop Baby, which is a mystery and is the only one which isn't really an adventure. Um, and The Boy Who Flew, which is uh, definitely darker and is about a boy who invents a flying machine um, and his best friend. Uh, and he have to try and protect um, their family from a really nasty piece of work. So what I thought I would do today is read a little bit from this book, uh, Murder in Midwinter. Uh, now it's about this girl called Maya who, oh is there a picture of her? There, she's up there. And she has, she comes from London and she's really an ordinary girl. She lives with her family in a flat in uh, near the river. She can probably just about see St Paul's from where she lives. Um, they run a plumbing supplies company and she lives really near this. So on her way back from school, she walks past these amazing buildings. But um, she's just a regular London girl and she goes to central London to see uh, the amazing lights in Regent Street and the shops. She wants to take pictures for her sister of all the shop windows. So she uh, takes these pictures with her camera and when she takes her camera, pictures with her phone, the flash goes off. Uh, so the flash goes off. There are lots of people on the street, they all look up at her of this bus and um, she takes another picture because she wants to take these pictures and the flash goes off and then she looks back and when she looks back she sees a man pointing a gun. Now she takes another picture. She takes a picture of him and he sees her. Now this wouldn't matter, she's on a bus, she's in a city of millions of people but thing about Maya is she has a white streak in her hair. Not only does she have a white streak in her hair, and this is what she'd look like when she's older, but she's wearing her school uniform. And the school uniform is distinct and unique. Now I know this because I've checked. You can find out what school anybody went to. So Maya is in danger. There is a kidnap. There is a murder. And she is sent away in heavy snow to stay with her aunt and her cousin on a pony trekking farm. She can't possibly get out, but can somebody get in? She's been under guard. She's got a policeman there all the time. And her policeman's gone off duty and she's waiting for another policeman to come back. A car arrives. From the kitchen window, I can see the back of the car. I'm expecting it to be Sergeant Lewis from yesterday, but it isn't. This man's bigger and he's wearing a beanie hat with police embroidered across the front. The guy skids out of the door of the car and leans back in to pick something up. And as he does so, a single ginger curl springs from the side of his hat and catches in the watery sunlight. <gasps> no, no, Ollie, Ollie. But Ollie doesn't come. I'm frozen. I stand staring through the window, watching the man straighten up. He pushes the curl back under his hat and checks his face in the wing mirror. It's him. The clock on the wall ticks. 
I hear the gate swing open. I duck down and creep round to the front door. There's no key in the huge lock, but there is a bolt, an ancient rusty bolt, going straight down into the flagstone floor. With both hands, I try to push it down, but I can't move it. It's solid. It hasn't been used for years. Crunch, crunch. The man's footsteps pad on the ice crust in the yard, getting closer. Could I run upstairs or... Or maybe I should hide and try and hold the door shut. I grab a chair and wedge it under the door handle and then race upstairs to Ollie's room. I hammer on the door. He's here. We need to hide. What do you want about? Says Ollie. He's sitting on his bed in a t-shirt and underpants. The murderer, Peter Romero, he's here. We have to hide. There must be somewhere. Show me. Oh... There should be a torch here. Oh, there's a priest's hole under the stairs. On top of a pile of what car magazines, I spot a head torch, grab it and race towards the top of the stairs. Where? Uh, downstairs, the dogs are going bonkers and I can hear heavy knocking on the door and then there's a crashing sound. Here, says Ollie, pushing an embroidered hanging to one side and opening a tiny doorway. Quick, you first. I throw myself into the tiny space and fall. Cobwebs brush my face and the square of light above me, dis above me disappears as Ollie crams in alongside. Will the hanging cover the door again? Hope so. Clunk. Heavy feet stand on sound on the flagstones. Ollie and I go completely still. The feet clump on the stairs. We sit in a tiny pool of torchlight listening. The cold bleeds into my legs, colder than I've ever been. In here, the thumps are muffled. We must be within the walls of the downstairs of the house, and although we probably can't be heard, we both stay silent. I play the torch around the walls. They're made of huge, damp blocks of rock, coloured with strange yellow lichens. It's a dungeon. It's a prison. If someone shot us down here, no one would ever know. Boards thump and the dogs bark. Then there are more heavy footsteps on the stairs and the floorboards over our head creak. The creaking stops, starts again. He's in your bedroom. He's in there for ages and then the feet sound again. Something heavy slides across the floor. I turn off the torch and we sit in the dark listening. There's a really long silence in which I wonder if he can see the door. I imagine him pulling back the hanging and seeing it. I hold my breath, just like I do when I'm playing hide and seek with my brother and sisters. Ollie holds his. Feet sound on the boards again, disappearing a little before reappearing on the stairs behind us. Ollie tenses up beside me and I reach my hand over to his. Wait. The dogs bark in the house and I can't work out if he's gone or he's still there hoping we'll come out. We wait. Now, if you want to know more, you have to read the book. But you'll find it in most libraries. I'm pretty sure of that. Anyway, I hope the rest of lockdown goes well. And I hope you have a good time. And um, I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Bye! over and out.